from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Gustav Ineza. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Marie Blanche Dion and family from St. Claude in Manitoba. This Mass is offered in memory of her deceased family members for the intentions of the living members and viewers of the Daily TV Mass and for world peace. Our thanks to Marie and family for the gift of the televising of this Mass to the faithful of Canada and around the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, today we commemorate Saint Josephine Bakita, a saint from Western Sudan in Darfur. Before we meditate on today's readings, let us acknowledge that we need God's presence and God's mercy in our lives. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who led St. Josephine Bakita from abject slavery to the dignity of being your daughter and the bride of Christ, Grant, we pray, that by her example we may show constant love for the Lord Jesus crucified, remaining steadfast in charity and prompt to show compassion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not completely follow the Lord as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Malik, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives who offered incense and sacrifice to their gods. Then the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this matter, that he should not follow other gods but he did not observe what the Lord commanded. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, since this has been your mind and you have not kept my commandment and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to some of your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. The word of the Lord. Oh 
became a snare to them. Lord, remember us for the love you bear your people. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician or of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Jesus heals the daughter of a Syrophoenician woman in the region of Tyre. Some Bible versions of this Mark and verse add Sidon, just as it is in Matthew. The woman who is called a Canaanite in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, is called a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia in Mark's gospel. We understand the importance of the woman's identity to the audience of the gospel authors, each of whom was addressing an understandable people, a people not expected to take an easy uh, interest in the healing powers of a young Jewish rabbi. We understand why the identity of the person matters. In addition to being a woman speaking on her own behalf at that time, she is a foreigner whose daughter is tormented by an evil spirit. While Matthew emphasizes the title she gives to Jesus, calling him Lord, Son of David, a strange reference coming from a non-Jew, Mark ignores it completely. Yet the reader has no doubt that she was, she, was, she would have been despised by the people of Israel in Jesus' day and would not have been expected to approach a young Jewish rabbi in this way. What is more, the way Jesus himself treats this woman is shocking, at least to our 21st century ears and minds. He calls her a dog. However, many Jews of Jesus' day would have treated this woman in this way, and it would have been expected. 
This is not to say that the listeners expected her to react the way she reacted. In fact, she turns Jesus' apparently contemptuous words against him. I say apparently contemptuous because some biblical scholars suggest that Jesus did not intend to insult her, but to see if she could overcome a difficult and insulting situation to greater advantage. In my country, in Rwanda, we have a tradition of gathering around the fire in the evening and making up stories about somebody sitting in a circle. If that person is offended, we call them igifura, which is compared to what you would say here in the West, a chicken. Nothing to do with the bird. Perhaps Jesus wanted to show to those around him that this woman had some strength and resolve to overcome the othering and the despise she had lived. Dear brothers and sisters, I love this story in the context of this year's date, the 8th of February. And because on this day, I was ordained uh, 10 years ago. And this story coincides with my 10th anniversary uh, to the priesthood. And as a student in interfaith studies, I find it a blessing to hear Jesus praise the faith of a foreign woman who did not belong to his religious tradition, acknowledging that her faith was great, just as he called the faith of a Roman centurion greater than that of any member of the people of Israel. So we are called to recognize God's words, even when they come from people who do not belong to our traditions. Secondly, this year the gospel is read on the day when the church commemorates St. Josephine Bakita, a native of Darfur in Western Sudan, a region currently experiencing a ferocious war. Bakita, the young slave kidnapped and sold to numerous slave masters, was finally bought by an Italian diplomat who took her to Europe, where she became a nun. She has become an emblematic example for those who dedicate their lives to freeing slaves from all forms of modern slavery, especially human trafficking. Timothy Schmalz has created a sculpture of her freeing people from human trafficking entitled, Let the Oppressed Go Free. You can find it at Regis College here in Toronto uh, on Wellesley Street in front of the college. Like the Syrophoenician woman, she embodies those who through their moral and spiritual strength have committed themselves to the fight against uh, despise, being othered. And in the case of Bakita, she embodies those who dedicated their lives to freeing slaves. So let us pray that we may become able to recognize God's voice even when it comes from people we do not expect to speak for God. Let us also pray for the resolve of those who have dedicated their lives to freeing people from modern forms of slavery and treatments that marginalize them and prevent them from feeling that they too are children of God. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring our prayers and petitions to God. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord is our prayer. This month is dedicated to the Holy Family. We ask in our community prayer that all those in our families who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit may find relief and healing through our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. All these prayers and those that are deep down in our hearts, we bring them to God and we ask God to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Let us pray. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Paquita, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Josephine Bakita, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lord. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only said the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Josephine Bakita, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go and announce the Gospel. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. My dear friends, we invite you to join us for the daily TV Mass 40 Days of Lent online retreat, which will be posted on our website, YouTube channel, and on the free daily TV Mass app each day during Lent. For more information, please visit our website at dailytvmass.com or call our office. We look forward to journeying with you this Lent. God bless.